that's with the win. It doesn't need the win. It's a lovely strike from Matt Diel to end the over 74. One step at a time. This was the guidance given to Trinidadian all-rounder Mark Dial by head coach of the St. Lucia Zooks Andy Flower before the start of the recently concluded Caribbean Premier League. The 27-year-old said it was this simple piece of advice he applied throughout the tournament. Though Dial was off to a slow start and his season was interrupted by injury, the youngster was sensational in the latter part of the tournament and played a key role in taking his team to the final. Here's more of what he had to say. So the Caribbean Premier League has just finished. Tell us, how was life in the bubble? Uh, life in the bubble was definitely different uh, compared to our previous tournaments and even compared to the natural, normal lifestyle. You know, um, it was definitely something that it took a little while getting used to because, you know, just mere fact of the restrictions, you know, that you weren't allowed, to, especially for the first few days when we were there quarantined, we were just, we weren't able to come out, you had to stay in your room, it was just something sort of like jail, yeah. you know, you open your door, you collect your food, you go back in your room and that was something <clears throat> taking a little while to get accustomed to but like everything in life you have to adapt and you know um, it's becoming a new norm. And with all the noise surrounding whether the tournament should have taken place or not, what is your sum up of the whole tournament and the way it was run? I think it was a great effort and a great initiative by CPL uh, and by extension Western Cricket Board because, you know, um, obviously there weren't any sports playing around the world, cricket especially. So it was a big effort by them. I thought that it was a bit challenging for the players as well. But, you know, as professionals, you need to you know, adapt, like I said. So it was something different. It was, it, was, it was a good opportunity as well for the guys, like the local guys especially, because seeing that there weren't any, any sports playing in the whole world, you know, all eyes in the world, even people who don't even know about cricket were just looking because Mere fact as sport lovers, they, that was the only sport I was playing. So you know, I thought it was a great effort by CPL to, you know, uh, try their best and, and put the extra effort out there to get in sports, getting cricket played. You have had several commendable moments in this last <coughs> CPL with the bat, ball, and in the field. But what was the highlight of the tournament for you? Um, the highlight for me will definitely have to be the semi-finals. Um, you know, just for the fact that. You know, from the start of the tournament, um, you know, Sammy, both Sammy and I, you, you having conversations on and on. You know, after the first couple of games, you know, he kept telling me about uh, my my ability and my talent and stuff. And that, you know, he even said he told me that he played 12 years of international cricket and he don't have half the talent as I. So you know, a guy of that status and played all over the world, saying something to me as a youngster, it was really, you know, it, it, it hit me hard, right? And that was really, really. How to put it? I started to put a little emphasis, extra emphasis on doing well. You know, I wanted to do well, but you know, like I felt as though I had a point to prove. I had a big game somewhere, and uh, he kept telling me always after every game he would say, "Mark, you have a man in the match in you, and you have the man in the match in you. You have a game in it." And I kept saying, "Yeah." And then, you know, as the tournament got closer and closer and closer to crunch time and to the to the end, I started saying, "Oh boy, game's going down," you know. And um, the Monday we we practiced. Um, I was speaking to the coach, and coach said that, you know, he was telling me how I was batting well and stuff. I said, yes, you're not feeling well, I just haven't gotten the big scores yet. I said, well, coach, I just feel like something special coming in. And luckily enough, Tuesday, Tuesday was that day, right? And um, so that for me definitely has to be the highlight. You, you spoke about Sammy just now, and that is my next question. You've been afforded the privilege to work under the full of life Darren Sammy. What are some valuable takeaways from this experience? Um, definitely team spirit team man you know these are the things that these are the words that come to mind where selflessness is that these are the words that come to mind when I think about him you know um, some of the stuff that I took away from him is that you know once you put the team first and you have a you know a positive look on everything things will flow for you and that's that that was him you know he it's no secret he was struggling a bit mm -hmm. but you know that never got into the way of his positive thinking his way of uh, relating to the, the players even in his captaincy, you saw it, he made brilliant moves throughout the tournament. And, you know, that just speaks volume of the, of the individual of Sam, Darren Sammy because, you know, a lot of captains struggling with form could just, you know, it could falter in every aspect. But, you know, he kept, he kept pressing on about team and team and team and team efforts and, you know, the, all about the team goal. And that is something that I really learned from him is that 
don't matter your situation, no matter if you're going through a good period or a bad period. Once you keep a positive mindset, things will happen for you. Too. What will you attribute to the resurgence in your form after the injury during the CPL? Well, that is actually something that um, I must, you know, must pay a lot of tribute to a, a number of a number of people because, um, especially my dad, because you know, like the downtime, I was off for a couple of games. I looked at a lot of cricket. I was looking at the way a lot of batsmen was approaching their innings and I spoke to the coach, you know, and all, all they were just telling me is that to give yourself some time, you know, and I did a lot of um, retrospection, you could see, mm -hmm. you know, I took some time, went over the innings that I had before the way out and it was just a matter of giving myself some time, you know, um, just before, just before we played Trinidad, Evan spoke to me, pulled me once and he said that, you know, he gave me a lot of advice and, um, you know, I really took to it and the resurgence really came from me just having a difference in my mental approach more than anything else. And you've been exposed to some of the greatest international cricket minds with the likes of Jack Callis and most recently Andy Flower. What has this done for your game? It has definitely raised my game um, to another level. Um, if I must say that, you know, speaking to Jack Callis in 2015, then, you know, Andy Flower this year, it, what I learned is that the the main thing is keeping it simple, you know, and he spoke, he spoke to me before, after the first game and he said, you know, to climb the mountain, you need to go one step at a time, whichever mountain it be, one step at a time. Don't look too far, don't look behind, but one step at a time. And, you know, it may sound simple, but I took that and applied it to my cricket as well. You know, in my batting, sometimes I might think about the 15th over, but we only need 5th over, you know, and I just kept reminding myself, take it one step at a time. And that was something that, you know, it's a simple thing. Sometimes, you know, yes, you're exposed to all these great minds, but sometimes it's not the big things that they say would, would have an impact, it's the little things. And for me, that was one of the simple things that he said that stuck with me. And every chance he would see me, he would always remind me, one step at a time, one step at a time. Your progress from a left-handed batsman to a unique all-rounder, what stimulated this improvement? I always see myself as an all-rounder. I was just waiting for the right opportunity, you know, to show the all-round game mm -hmm. and so it wasn't really a resurgence it was just more self-belief and confidence that to know that when the time comes just be prepared for it. We had Nabi, Chase, even Cornwall and myself four guys that do the same thing right so I was just you know waiting doing my practicing doing my stuff waiting for the time the chance to come because I knew it would come sometime or the other it would come you know I had a couple overs in between in some games that um, you know I, I just stuck to my basics. And just how do you manage your time with such big goals in mind? It's, it's challenging, like everything in life has its challenges, but you know, um, dating to 2018, when I graduated, I said, I'm going to take this next five to eight years to focus on my career, my cricket career. So now I set short term goals, and 2018 I got selected for the Canadian Premier League. I did well there, last year was, I, started, I played CPL, and then I went to Dubai, and then this year again. So it's, for me, it's about setting small targets and trying to achieve them as you go along. Like, like I, I said, climbing the mountain one step at a time. And um, it's, it, it's obviously, it's a, big, it's a big task. You know, it takes a lot because you have to be training. The good thing is that I don't have school, you know. I have a couple, of, I have a business set up as well. I have a couple of burger carts. So I have that aspect as well set up. So, you know, um, which affords me the time and the finances as well to you know focus on my career so it's it's very time consuming as well because you know you have you have to be training like i can remember just before cpl this year for two to three months i was 10 o'clock out bowl lunch time eat three o'clock bat evening um feel do feeling and then seven to eight is gym and that was my schedule and you know um as, and as you speak to more and more world-class players you realize that this is just as a 9 to 5 job or 8 to 4, whereas you need to do the right thing, the basics over and over and repeat it over and over. So that is something that I have incorporated into my life and my lifestyle recently. And like I said, it's time consuming, but it's for the ultimate goal. So You've had some international exposure. How helpful has this been to your overall game? Global T20 was actually a career defining and career opening for me because I was selected for Winnipeg Hawks. And um, given the opportunity, you know, um, I was and I was fortunate to play under like a lot of top-class players. I had David Miller, David Warner, 
you know, Ray Adam Rich Simmons doing Bravo, Darren Bravo. So a lot of world class players feed Al Edwards. So for me, it was really it was first at first it was a good opportunity. But you know, I, like I said, I had a goal in mind and when I was going to Canada, you know, I said to myself that this is actually a proper chance for me to put my name out there. So, you know, I got a chance to bat early and I got a 68 and, and from then on it was just positive. And um, from then it was CPL the next day and then Dubai. And, and it was all in all it was a great experience, you know, sharing dressing room with different world class players at different leagues, you learn a lot. You know, but what is what is some of the key and most consistent thing with these world class players is their work ethics. And you know, as a as as a Caribbean player and from the Caribbean, I think that you know most of us our work ethic isn't as high as it should be. And even with myself, you know, at that point in time, I was I was just getting by, happy to just do enough and rely on natural ability. But you know, looking at the Coolies and the Villiers and these guys, their work ethic is 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 immense. It's, it's out of this world, you know. So that is something for me that I, I picked up on that I probably could say that I didn't have probably before. And clearly I've seen it it, it bearing fruits because it has raised my game a whole nother level. Coming off that stunner performance in the semis of the CPL, is the West Indies call up on your mind? Oh definitely. That is like I said that's my ultimate goal, you know, next day is actually World Cup. And it was brought to my attention by Sammy as well and our uh, manager, Ross, Ross Lewis. So, you know, he was telling me that my, my game is three-dimensional, bad ball field. Right in T20 cricket, that is very, very useful. So, you know, it's about putting that picture in my head, working towards that goal. I set a goal in, I set a goal in 2018, which was to, actually within the next five years, um, you know, to actually be playing around the world with all, all different franchises and also rep representing Trinidad and uh, West Indies, sorry. So definitely I would love, I would love, honestly, I would love to get a call up. I know there's a couple of uh, series coming up, you know, um, I would love for that opportunity, of course. And if you had the chance to feature the Indian Premier League, which would be your team of choice? Uh, <laughs> um, to be honest with you, playing representing any one of those eight teams would definitely be something special, you know, so whichever team it, it I get picked by, I love to be there. But obviously, you know, I have Kings 11 close to my heart as well. Me, um, you know, apart from Nicholas being there, they also own Zooks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a nice family like right there. So, right. they would have to be closest to my heart. Who has been the most influential person <laughs> in your cricketing career thus far? I'll have to say, definitely have to say my father, mm -hmm. you know, my dad. My parents, and in, in, actually, both of them. But, you know, my dad, because obviously he played for for Trinidad, you know, he played cricket. So he has had a great influence in my life, cricketing wise, career wise, life wise. But especially with cricket, you know, he always there to, to give the right advice. Though he's not a big talker, he's not a person who will come and, you know, announce himself on me as, as in terms of pressure me to do this or pressure me to do that, pressure me to practice or whatever. But he's always there to, to give the right advice, meaning whether it be my batting, my, you know, my bowling, certain things that he sees. Because it's obvious, he has seen me from small come straight up. So he's no better person to, you know, mm -hmm. um, notice changes and where I can improve on. And even simple as in the, um, the uh, you asked about, the, uh, about the, different, the after coming back from the injury. I know I spoke to him a lot and you know, he, kept, he kept reminding me that, you know, you have talent. You know, don't forget that your talent is what got you here. So don't, you know, don't, don't fluster yourself, don't get frustrated, just relax and play cricket. And again, the simple little advice can go a long way. Right. And you kind of answering some of my questions before <laughs> time. <laughs> uh, your father is a former national cricketer. Does this add pressure or is it a motivating factor? It definitely doesn't add any pressure because like I said, he's a very calm guy in terms of he, he don't pressure me about it. You know, there are some, some, uh, some parents who can be you know, a bit extra because they play in sport before and they just want their kid to do well. So it's like, I know he wants me to do well, but he's allowing me to figure out certain things in my career on my own. And it's, it's definitely a motivating factor because, you know, I know he, he played for Trinidad, but he wasn't, he, he wasn't able to move on to West Indies team. Not, you know, th at that time there was a number of great players, you know, quality at that time. So, you know, that, was, that, that is actually one of the motivating factors is to know that I can probably make him proud enough to know that I went one step further mm -hmm. in playing for West Indies. Right. 
I know you hold a degree in sports management, which is excellent, by the way. Was this all part of a long-term plan, having the option open to progress maybe into coaching or to get into the administrative part of things after your playing career? <laughs> now, I'm an honest guy, right? Yeah. So if I tell you the truth, that day was for my mother. Okay. Because, <laughs> <Right? laughs> you know, parents, so they can be with school. Yes. And, you know, she always, she always used to always remind me how important education can be, especially in sports. You know, you can... It's not, it's not something to speak about, but it happens. You can pick up an injury, a life-threatening injury. So you know, it's always, it's always good to have something to fall back on. I know she and my dad. You know, they were, all I want, all I was concerned about was finishing secondary school and playing cricket. That's all I wanted to do. You know, from since I was small, a kid, all I wanted to make my career as was a cricketer. But you know, that's where parents come in, and that's where advice comes in, and you know, they know what's best. And I was like, well, all right, fine. You want this so bad? Okay, I'm going to go, and go to school. I went, I got a degree, and the day that I graduated, she was there, my dad was there. And you know, as I, as I received my certificate, I told, this was the exact words. I said, ma, this is for you now. Now it's my turn to do my thing. And you know, but it worked out well, because you know, I must say, it, it's, it's a lot easier th knowing that, you know, the pressure isn't that much that, because the love for sport, the love for cricket is there for me. So that is my motivating factor, because I love cricket. But it's, it's good to know that you know you have something to fall back on, mm -hmm. whether if it works out or not. Outside of cricket now, how have you been dealing with the pandemic and all the limitations that come with it? To be honest with you, um, I'm not really an out there like lineman person or party person, so it, it wasn't that much of a difference. The only thing for me is that I just don't like to be restricted. Yeah. You know, and sometimes just be knowing that you're, you're not able to do certain things it, it has a it has a, like a psychological effect more than anything else but um i mean it, it was it was a bit different it was it was challenging at first but it's a new norm so you know you have to get used to it the the mask the washing your hands the mask for me is the hardest thing because i can't i look i i'm not able with that but um it's it's getting better to be honest Oh, sweet as a nut, it's been fatted here by Mark Dale. Holy sh- holy.